Hey folks, for today's lesson we're going to be looking at a position time graph again and one that has a curve on it. Um, as we talked about previously, a position time graph that has a curve tells us that the speed is changing as time goes along. So like we looked at before, if we generalize the slope of the curve as it proceeds, we can see that it becomes steeper and steeper as time goes on. So we actually have an object that's speeding up here. Now we haven't been able to do a lot with this curve yet um, because we don't know how to get the slope of a curve versus a straight line. So that's what you're going to learn how to do. <clears throat> so when we have a graph that has a curve and we need to find out the speed at a particular time, we calculate what we call the instantaneous speed. So an instantaneous speed is the speed an object has at one instant at in time. So basically since we know what's speeding up as time goes on, we may want to know what speed they were at at two seconds, or we might want to know how fast they were going at five seconds. Obviously here, they're going a lot faster at five seconds versus two seconds. We're gonna teach you how to do that. So if an object speed is changing, we use a tangent line to find the speed at one instant in time. Uh, I think it was grade nine math that you guys learned tangent lines. Basically a tangent line is something that touches a curve or a line at only one point. So a tangent line is a line that touches a graph at one point. It is parallel to our graph at that point. Basically it generalizes the speed. So to do this, you have this reading here. You can read that on your own, figure it out. I'm going to give you a walkthrough example on my graph here. Let's say we wanted to find our instantaneous speed at three seconds. So what we have to do is find three seconds on our graph, bring that up to the curve, make sure we mark that spot. So we are gonna try to find out what our speed is at three seconds. You have to take a ruler. I know rulers, we don't always have them. Get one, it's gonna make your life better, it's gonna make your lines better. <clears throat> now, bring your ruler up to that point on the line that you made and kind of rock the ruler back and forth to figure out what line best approximates the curve at that point. What I like to do is take a look a little bit to the left of the dot and a little bit to the right of the dot. Let's go say two centimeters. Now if I take a look over here we have about this much room and if we look over here we have approximately the same amount of room in between the ruler and the line so if we were to draw a line right here <clears throat> it is about the same amount of space on either side of that dot and it approximates our curve so a lot of it is just a lot of practice and rocking your ruler back and forth on that dot until you have a good approximation of how steep the line is at that point. When you get there, you are now focusing on the line you made, not on the curve you are working with. Because the curve speed changes as you go, a straight line is a constant speed. So now you have to pick a spot on your graph that's easy to read two spots actually. Now if I'm looking here, I'm kind of looking for where the lines cross so I can get a good approximation of at what position this line is depending on what time. So I like this cross section right here because we have two lines that intersect and let's keep going. Um, actually I like this line or this dot right here. If we're taking a look at our first spot, we can see that that's going to be at two seconds and it's one-fourth of the way up to one so it's going to be 0 0.25 meters. Our other point up here it's exactly halfway between four and five so this is going to be 4.5 seconds and we're going to find that that is at position two meters. Now I'm going to write these on a piece of white paper so it's easier to see. So my first dot was at 2 seconds, 0 0.25 meters. 
Our second dot was at 4.5 seconds and it was at 2 meters. After that, we just have to do our basic slope calculation or our velocity equals distance over time calculation. So if we know velocity equals distance over time, if we started at 0 0.25 meters and we went 2 meters, then we do 2 meters subtract 0 0.25 meters to figure out how far they traveled. And then we've got to figure out how much time passed. So if we uh, started, sorry, if we ended at 4.5 seconds and we started at 2 seconds, we can calculate how much time passed. So 2 meters subtract our starting 0 0.25 meters gives us 1.75 meters. And we can say they traveled that in 4.5, subtract 2 is 2.5 seconds. Get out your fancy calculator. 1.75 divided by 2.5 is 0 0.7 meters per second. You know that they're going to be traveling 0 0.7 meters per second at three seconds into the trial. I'm putting this just so it's super obvious that only at this point in the line were they traveling at 0 0.7 meters per second. Before that, they are going slower. After that, they are going faster. All right, any questions, make sure you ask in chat. Thanks, folks.